writing towards you. Keep the writing towards you. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the 10 top fears in the United States going back 70, 80 years. The list is always just about the same. Number 10. <laughs> Why are dogs number 10? Wait a minute, I used to have two Dobermans. They attack people, they maul people, right? No, I don't think so. The big guy would crawl up on your lap, probably. Why do people fear dogs? Keith. They might bite, they might chase, the vast majority are nice. All right, number nine, loneliness. Nobody likes to be lonely. But as Albert Einstein once said, in the middle of difficulty lies opportunity, I think the lonely person should buy a dog. Number eight, <laughs> flying, flying. How many people drove here today? Excellent. Statistically, what's more dangerous, flying or driving? And yet nobody flew. What a bunch of risk takers everybody is here today. Number seven, death. Wow, there is nothing funny about death, except the fact that there are six things people fear more than death. What could possibly be more fearful than death? Number six, sickness. I don't understand that one. I would rather die than get sick. I mean, I don't understand. I would rather get sick than die. I mean, come on, why? Number five, deep water. People fear deep water even more than death. How many people here saw Jaws? How many people here didn't take a bath for a month? Exactly. Number four, financial problems. It's going back years and years and years. The good news on that one is right now there are more resources than at any other time to either get yourself out of financial difficulty or learn about the financial markets. Number three, insects and bugs. Insects and bugs even more so than dogs? Why do people fear insects and bugs? More creepy. Creepy, crawly, the horrible little things. Number two, heights. Number two, heights. What do people hear for your heights? I kind of do. I'm not the guy that goes to the uh, you know edge of the cliff or the bridge or whatever and starts looking down. Went to the Royal Gorge for the first time a few weeks ago, and I, I went just the, just probably about 15 feet to the edge. It's a long way down there. I get a little sweaty palm on that one. And year in, year out, this one comes back as number one. Drum roll, please. Number one. Public speaking. Public speaking. Man, someone have told me that before I showed up here today. Holy cow. Public speaking. Well, wait a minute. I would rather die than do that presentation on Monday morning to the buying group. Why do people fear public speaking so much? Ridicule. Rejection. They're going to walk up here, trip on a cable, clunk their head, knock themselves out. It's going to be public humiliation. Then it'll be on CNN. It'll be in a billboard at 925. Everybody will know about it. I mean, that's what your mind comes up with, right? On this list here, there is one natural fear. As a matter of fact, we come into this world with only two natural fears. The second we're born, we are pre-programmed. Just like this computer, we're pre-programmed. They have two natural fears. One of them is behind me. Which one is it? Yeah. No, not death. The four, the four-year-old little toddler will walk right in the middle of I-25 if you let them. They are fearless. Something else. Loneliness. Not loneliness. Not loneliness. One more guess. John Madden fears this. Flying. Flying. Okay. All right. <laughs> Or fly. Heights is a natural fear. What is the other natural fear that we come into the world with? Hunger. Not hunger, no. Okay, you have a toddler in a high chair, and you're cooking in the kitchen, and you knock over an aluminum pan, and it goes bang, 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 right at their feet. What does the toddler do? There's crying. Or you're walking down the hall late at night, and someone comes up behind you, and they go, woo, and you jump out of your skin. Loud noises. We come into this world with a fear of heights and loud noises, which means everything else on here is what? Is learned. Which means we can do what? Unlearn it. It's like if I have a corrupt file on this computer. I can run a virus scan, find the corrupt file, hit the delete button, and then that little applet pops up and it shows the bar going across. It's deleting the file. It's the same thing with us. 
do a lot of profiles. I have over, I'm overwhelmed with profiles sometimes. But you know what? We can unlearn the fears that are holding us back. But maybe on the computer here, the profile might take a minute, maybe two minutes to be removed. How long does it generally take us to develop a positive habit or minimize a negative habit? 21 days or more. A little bit louder, sir. 21 days or more. 21 days on average. Which means if I want to become a better public speaker, if I want to overcome my fear of public speaking, or, you know what, I really would like to understand how the financial markets work, how can I save more money, put together a budget for myself, etc. That means we have to do it day in, day out, continually making progress for 21 days, establishing momentum. We can't stop and start, we have to establish momentum. One thing that I've heard, that works magnificently is something called the seven day challenge. Any time that you are trying to change a behavior or ingrain a positive habit, try the seven day challenge. Let's talk about developing a positive attitude. I'm gonna try to stay positive for seven days. Try it sometime, it's ridiculously hard. But I'm gonna stay positive for seven days. And if I find myself falling off the wagon and getting very, very upset and getting overly angry, that means you have to go back to day one and start over again. Now, we're all human. We're all human. Give yourself permission to be human. So if somebody cuts you off in traffic, if you're standing in line at King Supers, big long line, you open up a new checkout and the person behind you grabs the new checkout, that's okay. It's okay to get upset. We're all human. The key regarding the seven day challenge is not to dwell is not to dwell. Give yourself permission to be human, but the key is not to dwell. After you've made it through seven days, you've accomplished 80% of your goal. I know the math doesn't work out, but you've accomplished 80% of your goal because you've done the heavy lifting. Top 10 fears. Most of them are right up here, and we have within us the tools, the techniques, the strategies develop positive habits to minimize our negative habits. Let's give our volunteers a round of applause.